Hello, welcome to The Repair Specialist, and first of all, I want to say a huge thank you for clicking through to this video, and for all those that have subscribed. And I'm making this video in response to a few requests asking if cold engine oil can be put into a hot engine. And so, from what I can gather by these questions is that the operator either wants to perform a service on the vehicle and therefore has warmed the engine up to working temperature to drain the oil when the oil's thinner, and then they want to know if it's okay to place fresh cold oil into the engine when it's hot, or they've been running the engine for a little while and stopped the engine just to have a quick check of the oil and it's not quite up to the right level and they want to add to the oil. If it's either one of these, then the quick answer is yes, of course you can. But there are a few things to consider when doing this in order for things to run smoothly and prolong the life of your engine. And if you're interested in knowing them, then please keep watching. So throughout the video, I'm going to explain these considerations based on my own opinion and experience. So if you really want a foundational understanding of this topic, then please do watch throughout. And at the end of the video, there will be an 11 point summary in list form of the kind of things I do when I'm replacing hot engine oil for cold engine oil in a hot engine, which of course could quite easily work as a checklist when replacing the oil and performing any work of this kind. But I will have to explain and go through all of this first in order for all of that to make sense. And whilst the information I'm about to give might be common knowledge for some, it's new and important information for others. And so if you watch the whole video through to the end, then you'll be much more equipped to undertake this kind of work for yourself. It's simply a matter of good guidance and some sensible decisions, both of which I hope I've covered within and throughout the video. And that's why, personally, I recommend that you watch the whole video because then you will get that wholesomeness of information that you can take with you when you're working on your own machine. And knowing this will only take the next eight minutes or so for the remainder of this video. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's start. And so if I was only topping up the oil, then the first thing I would make sure of is that the engine is turned off. And that's because if we don't turn the engine off, we'll never get a good reading on the dipstick. And that's because the sump oil at the bottom there of the engine is always being used. We've got the oil pump that's always picking that oil up and taking it to the different parts of the engine. And so it's being used out of that area. So what we want to achieve is for all the oil to be still and present at the bottom of the sump to take an accurate measure of how much there is. So my recommendation is always turn the engine off. And doing this will remove any chance of oil spitting back when the filler cap's removed for the oil to be poured in. But before stopping the engine, the vehicle needs parking on a level surface. And that's because we want that oil inside the engine there to be as level as possible in order to get the true reading. Because if it was tilted on its side, as you can see there, we'd get false readings. And we'd end up putting either too much oil in there or too little. And another thing to consider is that when the engine was running, that oil was taken up to all of them components in the engine. And now the engine stopped, a lot of that oil is now still trapped between all of that piping network and some of those engine components. And so that means that if some of that oil is still trapped up above, it's not going to give a true reading down below in the sump. Then it's going to show that there's less oil in the engine than what actually is. And so now we've got the engine stopped and it's on a flat surface, I now personally recommend to wait around 10 to 15 minutes for that oil to drop down back to the bottom of the sump. Remember, even though you've just stopped the engine, the engine is still hot, so the oil's nice and hot, and that means it will have a nice thin viscosity and therefore drain down nicely in that time. Okay, so bearing in mind that this is all for the oil top up first rather than the service. So far, we've got the hot engine, we've turned it off, it's on a flat surface, and now we need to take a reading of how much oil is already inside the sump there so we know how much exactly to add to it to get the correct reading on the dipstick. And so when we take the reading using the dipstick now, there are two things we need to consider. The first one is to make sure that the dipstick is fully down into its tube with no gaps at the top. And this of course will make sure that the measuring end of the dipstick will protrude into the oil as much as it should do for a correct accurate reading. And I'm mentioning this now because it's surprising how easy it is to make this mistake. And another thing to consider when taking the reading, as we mentioned before, this oil inside here in the sump is hot. That means it's of a thin viscosity. It won't cling so well to the measuring end of the dipstick. And so that means because there'll be less oil clinging to the end there, it will be less visible. It will basically be 
harder to see, so harder to determine the correct level. So this needs to be taken into account and extra vigilance is necessary. So of course we don't have this problem when the engine's cold and the oil is cold, because the oil goes thicker and more of it sticks to the end of the dipstick, so it can be seen better and more of an accurate reading can be taken. And so now we've taken the reading and we know how much oil is in the sump. If any needs to be added, then it's best to add this in small stages. So we pour a little bit in and then we check the oil. Then pour a little bit more in, then check the oil. But take into account as well that we're pouring in cold oil. That means the oil is thicker and so it will take a minute or two for the oil to trickle down from the top of the engine and down into the sump in order to give a good accurate measurement. Another thing some people tend to consider is that hot oil is slightly more expanded than it is when it's cold. So they take this into consideration when they're adding to the oil. So what I'm saying is, if there's a certain level of hot oil inside the engine here, as expressed on the dipstick, then according to this, there's quite a possibility that there isn't actually this much, because when it goes cold, it will go lower because it's contracting. But in this instance, where we're putting cold oil into hot oil, depending of course how much cold oil we put in the engine, then we're going to end up somewhere with sort of warm oil. It's less of a problem here, especially if we get the level correct on that dipstick between those two points, then that will be enough to give for any expansion or contraction. In fact, getting the oil level smack bang in the middle of those two points on the dipstick there means that this has all been taken into consideration. All the expanding and all the contracting of the oil inside the sump there, this is all a consideration of that. As long as we're in between those points, we're good to go. And so they're the main points I consider when I'm adding cold oil to a hot engine. And that is in the situation where the hot engine already has some hot oil inside of it. And so in the situation where we're servicing the engine, so we're warming the engine up to working temperature, getting that oil inside there nice and thin, and then draining it off, and then we're refilling it now with cold oil. Well, in this instance, we're not adding cold oil to hot oil. We're simply adding cold oil into a hot engine, an empty engine. And doing this is absolutely fine, no problem whatsoever. But unless I knew exactly how much oil the engine takes, I would do as I did before. I would put a little oil in, wait a minute or two, and then check the dipstick. Put a little oil in, wait a minute or two, and check the dipstick. And what you'll tend to find this time when you're checking the dipstick is that there's a more definite oil mark on the measuring end of the dipstick itself. Because the oil is that much thicker, so it will stick to the dipstick better. You'll be able to see it better on there. But of course there's far more to changing oils and servicing engines than what I've actually gone through here. I've only given some general pointers based on my own point of view of cold oil in a hot engine. And so let's just finish off by summarising the points of topping up a hot engine with cold oil. First, we need to be parked on a level surface. We turn the engine off and then we wait a little while for the oil to drop down. I usually wait between 10 and 15 minutes. And then check the dipstick to see how much oil is actually in the engine before we start. And any oil that needs to be added can be added in small increments whilst checking the oil level in between. Ensure that the dipstick is fully inserted down into its tube to get the correct level. And always be extra extra vigilant of the oil mark on the dipstick itself to get the right level. And something I'd like to add here as a little disclaimer is consult your owner's service manual that comes with your vehicle before you undertake any work. And depending on your level of experience and confidence, it's a good idea to consult a service professional when it comes to undertaking any work yourself. And so adding cold oil to a hot engine during a service, basically when you've drained your hot oil and you come to replacing your oil, you just simply pour in your cold oil and everything's absolutely fine. The engine will be more than willing to accept that and indeed its very design will allow it to do so. But like before, you just need to be vigilant about your oil level as you're putting the oil in. So adding the oil in increments and checking the oil level in between those increments and making sure we don't put too much oil in or too little oil in. It's as simple as that really. And as I've said, to perform the service itself is a whole different thing and it's a whole different set of knowledge itself. So consulting a professional or the owner's manual is a must before beginning any work of this kind. And the principles of what we've been talking about applies to all types of four-stroke machinery. So it's not just cars, lorries and vans and that sort of thing. It's lawn mowers and four-stroke brush cutters, all types of four-stroke garden machinery and dig to bulldozers. Basically, if the machine has a four-stroke engine, then the principles of what we've been talking about apply. And so at that, I really want to thank you for watching, and I hope that this video and its content and this summary has really been beneficial to you. And as I've mentioned, the content in the video is based on my own personal experience and my own personal opinions based on the work that I've done as a repair engineer and the research I've conducted over the many years that I've serviced and repaired engines. 
And I just want to finish off by saying that I really do appreciate every click through, every minute watched and every single subscriber. I want to thank all of you because I'm doing something I really love doing. I love doing these videos. And the driving force for doing them is hoping that I'm teaching somebody what they want to learn in a way that they want to be educated about these topics. And so, please, if you have benefited from this video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done already. Thank you so much for watching.